What's up guys, I'm Jeff from Worldwide Cyclery and today we are at the trailhead with Charlie from Industry 9 and we're going to talk about all things i9, especially their new products. So, right off the bat, who is i9, Charlie? So i9 is a small company started out of a machine shop in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, they were founded by Clint Spiegel out of the Turnamic machine shop in about 2005 or 2006. It's six, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, there was always a lack for high engagement wheels that were really strong that could survive Pisgah National Forest and that's kind of where we got our start from and here we are today doing full wheel sets across the world. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, i9 to me has always been sort of an iconic brand because back in the day I saw their first set of wheels. They sounded crazy. They had a ton of engagement. They were all colorful with aluminum spokes and just fancy anodized hubs and pretty impressive stuff. So let's dive into sort of the timeline of the i9 wheel history. So the timeline of Industry 9 stuff, Legacy Torch Hydra. Legacy came out 06, 07, mm -hmm. Torch. Torch was about 2013, and mm -hmm. then uh, new Hydra stuff came out 2019, earlier this year. Yeah, so biggest difference between Legacy and Torch? Legacy was very hard to uh, service. Um, the bearings weren't that great. It was still our first try at it. Um, we There was a couple of things that we could have improved on with those, and uh, the Torch kind of knocked a bunch of those out of the park with the serviceability and the bearing life on there. Got it. And then so Torch to Hydra, biggest difference there? Same thing again. Um, we, we saw a need for improvement in the... <laughs> <laughs> So a need for improvement in both the uh, the bearing life and the resistance. We had a little bit higher resistance compared to some of the other competitors, and we figured we might as well get the engagement at the same time with those. Sweet. Yeah, so Hydra did solve some interesting problems and was a significant upgrade, so let's dive into that. So the Torch hubs were pretty impressive. I loved them. I never really had any complaints. They're some of my all-time favorite wheels. That is a pretty challenging thing to make even better. Hydra, you guys feel like you did. You've got way more engagement, went from 120 to 690, right? Um, and a few other noticeable things, most notably other than the engagement, is that actual just drag and the resistance on it. So talk about how you guys achieved both of those things and why they were meaningful things to focus on fixing. Okay. So with the, the, the main point that we wanted to when we developed Hydra was we had bearing issue life. We also had drag. That, that was a little bit high. Um, through what we found out, it's about 20% less with Hydra compared to Torch. Um, a couple of ways that we did this, we used a much shallower drive ring compared to the Torch. So if you compare those two, you see that the teeth on the drive ring are actually much shallower. Um, also, if you look really close, and there's actually a leaf spring compared to a coil spring, which has a more linear push on it. So it's not quite, doesn't quite Got slam it. it up into the pole so hard, or up into the tooth so hard. And uh, not quite as much push to get it up in there. So that helped with the resistance uh, quite a bit. Yeah, cool. And it also made it a lot easier to work on as well since you it don't did. have that, that tiny little microscopic spring flying yes. on the ground. Yes, and, and the, the Paul springs, from what we found out, have do not come out randomly and eject across the room. You have to go crawl around the floor to try to find them. Where is it? Where is it? So yep. it's gotten much easier on that sense. It's cool. So, interesting thing, you said the number of teeth on Hydra is how many? So there'll be, the drive ring will have 115 teeth on it compared to 60 on the torch. Got it. So 115 teeth with 690 points of engagement. And that's because? We use a single pawl engagement. So when there's no torque on the system, these pawls will spin, or the, as the system itself spins, you get one pawl will engage at a time. Uh, as soon as you go to apply torque, which is going to be pedaling in this case, you will actually have, there's a little flex built into the system and you will actually use the engage pawl as a fulcrum and it will rotate two to three pawls behind it into engagement. So you're never driving the system on one, just one pawl. Cool. And that I'm sure, you know, works into just like reliability and all that sort of stuff. Well. Reliability. I mean, the, 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 the pawls and the driver are both made out of heat treated A2 tool steel. So they're very, very hard. Um, but just to give a little bit more force on it, um, we, you know, we like to have not just one point of contact when it, when it's needed. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, points of engagement going from 120 to 690, 120 is already a ton. That's like when you have that amount of play you have in your crank. So when you're, you know, backpedaling a little bit on a technical climb, or when you're just going right out and get out of the corner, snapping down there, there was like the ever so slightest bit of play. And now there's basically no. Nothing. <laughs> 0.5 degrees, yeah. Yeah, so that's more or less infinite engagement at that point, mm -hmm. anything, pretty much. As close as you can get using a mechanical system, yes. Yeah, cool. And then also some minor upgrades on the end caps, the way those are designed to just keep it more sealed. 
Yeah, so you know, going back to the bearing life issue that, that we did have with uh, some customers, um, we wanted to find a way to keep more foreign debris out of the end cap, out of the system itself. Um, so what we did is we actually changed the end cap around a little bit. We took the Teflon seals out, and uh, now if you for dirt, water, whatever else you may want to get into the hub, it has to go across two walls to get it now, and it's just designed to keep it out of there a little bit more. Awesome. Yeah, and we're going to drop a link below in the video description to a blog post that has a lot more images of all this stuff and sort of goes into the more nitty gritty. Um, also, check out Industry 9's YouTube channel. They made a bunch of videos about the sound differences and all the other like crazy technical nerdy aspects of these things. So definitely check that out. And uh, let's see, let's talk about the whole lineup now. Okay. All right, so lineup wise, you guys have always offered, I guess starting with mountain bike wheels, but now offering quite a bit of stuff. I've always been a huge fan of the Enduro 305s. That's my current favorite set. Um, what's the most popular? What else do you guys offer? The most popular has definitely been the Enduro 305. It does a little bit of everything from, we've seen guys on downhill bikes use it, to trail bikes, to even heavier cross country riders was pick the 305. Um, we do have that available in carbon as well, so it would be the 310. So it's cool. basically the same rim, just a touch wider, but of course constructed out of carbon, still same chassis and hub on it. Um, we do offer a couple of configurations, a 32 and a 24 hole in those. So a little bit Sweet. lighter, a little bit more compliant on the 24 hole versus the more burly 32 hole as well. Got it. So, and so people know the numbers, 305, the actual width, the internal width of the rim, right? right. 30.5 millimeters and 310 would be 31. Yep. Um, so yeah, that kind of helps people gauge what's for what. And then also XC wheels, downhill wheels, road, cyclocross, all the above. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the number scheme will be the same for about all of them. For example, we have the grade 300 for the downhill wheels, the ultralight 235 for the cross country wheels, and that kind of goes back and forth to the gravel line as well. Awesome. So something for everyone, a ton, ton of wheels to choose from. The other cool thing, which has always been one of my favorite things, is the custom colors you guys do. So on your website, you have the Anno Lab. We've done a ton of custom builds and we always work with you guys to put some cool stuff together. I have on my own bike some turquoise rear hub, black front hub, a couple mixed in turquoise spokes. So Anno Lab, custom colors. What is the number of colors offered? So we offer 11 different colors. Um, on the Anolab 2, you can go through and you can select the color and you can go select each individual, individual spoke. You can select the valve, you can select the hub, select the hub color as well. Um, so there's many options. We can't even calculate the total amount of options with all the colors and all the spokes and the wheels. So there's, there's quite a bit of them, but 11 colors um, to choose from. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome, good stuff. Let's dive into some common questions about the new Hydra versus Torch. All right, Charlie, most common question about Hydra versus Torch. How's it sound? How does it sound? Yes, yeah, so that's a very common one that we get quite a bit. Uh, Torch has always been known for being very loud based on how much grease, how much oil you put in that hub when you service them. Um, Hydra has been you know, like we talked about earlier, where it's not an actual such a hard throw to get into the engaged position that it is a little bit quiet. Uh, with the more engagement points, the sound is a little bit more subtle and it uh, hums a little bit more. So yeah. it's not quite the same sound. Seems quieter right off the bat. I mean, just a different sound as well. I mean, that was something I always thought was a little funny. A lot of people complained about Industry 9 wheels being too loud. And I kind of thought like, that's like complaining that your Ferrari is too loud. Like that's a good sound that makes me feel joy in my heart, but <laughs> I guess some people didn't like it. Um, so Hydra, you can make quieter, particular type of grease you recommend to do so. Yeah, so we recommend, so from the factory, the hubs are gonna come built with the Dumontech Pro X grease. Um, if you want them a little bit quieter, you can put a little bit more grease in there and put some around the drive ring as well. Uh, if you want it a little bit more loud, when, when you go to service your hubs, you can use the Dumontech Free Hub oil instead of the grease and make it a little bit more loud that way. Awesome. And probably don't use anything other than those two lubricants you just mentioned, correct? Correct. Yeah, thicker grease can cause a lot of problems. Yeah. So fair warning, don't put thicker grease in there. Um, let's show you guys some sound comparisons right now.
So the next most common question, can your existing torch wheel set be upgraded to the Hydra internal mechanism? Fortunately, these cannot. So there you go, can upgrade it, sell your wheels on pink bike, buy yourself a fresh set of Hydras. Um, plenty of options there. Price points are starting at what for like the enduro sets? Uh, full wheel sets are gonna start about 1355 based on the course on the color that you select. Um, that stock color is gonna be the 1355 and that'll be all black. And then the, the wilder you get with it, the more the price will go up. Cool, makes sense, sounds good. Well, make sure you guys check the link below to the blog post where you can see a lot more about this stuff. Check out Industry Nine's website as well and their YouTube channel like I mentioned. Please share this with your mountain bike buddies who are interested in super fancy high-end wheels and we'll see you guys in the next one.